booktube thank you so much for watching books i'm not reading i'm here today to do um a january february wrap up um normally i do my tbrs and wrap ups um every quarter but i decided while these books were still fresh in my mind um to talk to you about them um because i have one one book on my tbr for march which i'll talk about in a little bit and um, at the end of March, I will do another quarterly um, TBR for the next three months. So, so first of all, I just want to start off by gushing about a few books. And unfortunately, this first one I can't tell you too much about because I don't want to give anything away. That's In the Lake of the Woods by Tim O'Brien. Um, I was a little bit nervous about this one because it, it, it the plot is quite dark. Uh... But I read this as a buddy read with my husband, Jason, from Old Blues Chapter and Verse, and Mark Nash, um, who's, Mark Nash is also a big Tim O'Brien fan. This is my third Tim O'Brien book, and uh, I absolutely loved it. Uh, I still love the things they carried more, but this is just a really, really gripping book. Like, I just couldn't, I couldn't put the thing down. And, um... It's about a couple, a married couple, who um, the husband was running for office um, in his state and lost the election. And so he and his wife go and rent a house uh, in the woods by a lake and uh, um, what kind of happens there. So it's really, really interesting. Um, and, and one of the things I found fascinating is, even though this came out in 1994, um, he has chapters in here called evidence chapters, um, which contain quotes from real, um, fictional and non-fictional, uh, people, and, uh, it really reminded all three of us, I think, of Lincoln and the Bardo. So, anyway, I don't want to tell you too much more about it because it is, um, I, I, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but it's a great book, five stars for sure. Next things to gush about are Betty Smith books, <laughs> of course. Um, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn and Joy in the Morning. Um, so uh, I'm trying to read uh, all four of Betty Smith's books, which the next two are Maggie Now and um, Tomorrow Will Be Better, because Tomorrow Will Be Better is being reprinted, I believe, in May. So I have that on pre-order. That's my one book this year that I get to buy. Um, but so in uh, January and February, I read this for the third time and this for the second time. Now the other two books I haven't read at all. So they will be on my next um, TBR, but it was, you know, you always wonder when you when you revisit a book, is it going to be as good as you remembered? And Duff, I mean, both of these just, ugh, it's about their first year of marriage and just the struggles a young couple has that's, you know, just trying to make ends meet, that kind of thing. So anyway, but I really, really enjoyed this. And there was this one part I wanted to share since you're all book lovers. So she went from room to room, floor to floor, stack to stack, reveling in books, books, books. She loved books. She loved them with her senses and her intellect, the way they smelled and looked, the way they felt in her hands, the way the pages seemed to murmur as she turned them. Everything there is in the world, she thought, is in books. Things that people said and did and the way they thought and acted even from a way back, a way back, long before Jesus was born even. Everything that ever happened or could happen or didn't happen is in these books. Everything since the world began. So I just love that. It's still, it's still worth reading, especially if you like The Tree Grows in Brooklyn. And how, how could you not like Tree Grows in Brooklyn? <laughs> so definitely these are all... Um, Five, uh, Joy in the Morning would probably be four and a half stars for me. Okay, so on to some other things. I'm not going to go into too much depth with these because I did reviews of them. So um, I read Frederick Bachman's Bear Town. He, of course, is most famous for his book called, I'm going to try to get it right this time, A Man Called Uwe. 
<laughs> I hope I said that right this time. Um, and this is about um, an incident that happens in a hockey town in Sweden. Now this book, I think some of you would really like. It just, again, it just wasn't for me. Um, this is Joyce Dennis's uh, a collection of columns that she wrote for a magazine um, during World War II, and then eventually they were compiled into a book. I think it's just because I, I don't know if it, I, I don't know if I wasn't like onto the British sense of humor. Maybe um, I'm not sure. Like I think I, I really do think somebody else might enjoy this, but it just I don't know. I, it just took me too long to kind of get into it. It's not a very long book. Um, and it's about a, a community that lives on the coast of England during World War II and the sacrifices and hardships that they go through and their struggles, um, while still keeping it fairly light. <laughs> Please, if you would like either of these books, or both of them, because um, I haven't had any takers, um, I'd be happy to send them to you if you are willing to share your mailing address. You must have a mailing address in order for me to send them to you, but I would be glad to do that. Um, otherwise, they will they will end up in a free library or be donated. So, But if you'd like them, let me know, and I'd be happy to send them to you. I don't think I had either of these books on my official TBR. I think, well, I in part forgot that Rainy and I were reading Antony and Cleopatra. This is a library book, so <laughs> one of the few library books I get to get to check out this year. Um, so we read this together. It took, it took longer than I think we, uh, either of us were anticipating. Yeah, I asked Jason, like, is this classified as a history? Is this classified as a tragedy? And Jason said it's classified as a problem play, <laughs> which I think both Rainy and I agreed that it, it is it is a sort of a problem play. I think my problem, <laughs> anyway, is that I really wanted more Cleopatra and uh, less of the political side of things. But yeah, I, I know that's not how it goes. But Cleopatra, I, I loved Shakespeare's portrayal of her, and uh, she. Just, yeah, just a, a fantastic character, and I would really like to read more about her. I believe Stacey Schiff wrote um, a biography of Cleopatra, so 2021, I will, I will see if I can hunt that down. The other thing I read um, was a collection of poetry called Every Ribbon Thing. This is by Christian Wyman. I have read his memoir called My Bright Abyss, which is absolutely outstanding and this collection of poems I, I I don't want you to think that I just sat down and read the whole thing in one sitting I did not I spaced it out over the last two months uh, and um, honestly the title poem is the best poem in the book um, but it is a great book of poetry and I've been trying to figure out how to make a video on it and I I'm just not really sure yet. I will link down to a video of um, I, Jason's read every Roman thing on his channel, and I think there is a video of Christian Wyman actually reading it himself. So I will link to one of those videos down below so that you can hear that poem because it is spectacular. All right, and so finally, <clears throat> with the rest of with the rest of uh, February. I am reading Muriel Barbary's Gourmet Rhapsody, which is about a food critic uh, who's on his deathbed and people around him and just telling a little bit more about him. So this is by the woman who wrote um, The Elegance of the Hedgehog, which was a huge hit um, when it came out. And uh, Jason found this for me and got this for me a while back and so I decided to give it a try um, and I fully expect, I expect to have this done by the end of February and so if I have leftover time before March begins I will continue <laughs> to read Raymond Carver's Where I'm Calling From and Gloria Steinem's, let's see, Outrageous Acts and Everyday Rebellions. Uh, so I have made progress in both of these books. It has been a little bit slower than I would have liked, um, but I, 
you can see where my bookmarks are. I mean, Raymond Carver, I read three stories the other day, um, and I mean, it was all basically about an alcoholic husband who's either getting kicked out of the house by his wife, or he's kicked his wife out of the house, or she's just left. Um, and they were, it was just weird. It was just like, doo doo doo. And I, I really wish whoever had compiled these stories maybe would have not put those three right next to each other. This book is great. I just want to talk to her about the current situation. So much of this stuff uh, that I've read so far anyway has been from like 1972. Um, so before I was born. And in some ways I feel like, oh, wow great like women have we've we've come we've come a long way on the other hand I'm like oh my god there's you know there's still so much more so I almost wish that I had a collection of her essays from right now like what's happening in this moment um I'd, I'd like to hear her thoughts on it but she was present at just some really I mean she was a reporter uh you know during the civil rights movement, and um, there's a lot of talk about um, presidential campaigns that she was either working on to help a candidate or that she was covering it and she was with the press corps on the planes and things like that. So um, she was really right right there at, from the beginning. Um, but it's, uh, it's very interesting, um, and I'll talk more about this, some, some of these essays in particular, um, later. <laughs> Hopefully when I'm done. So the one book I didn't get to on my TBR is Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Fowler. Excuse me. Um, so I didn't get to this one, but I'll just add it to my next TBR, I think. And finally, we get to, so what am I reading in March? I am participating in March of the Mammoths which is hosted by Jason, as well as Alex from Big Al Books and Luke Hosh from Totally Pretentious. And there is my mammoth bookmark. And as I've said before, I'm reading David Copperfield with Joe Smith. Um, so we have been trying to figure out when to check in with each other, how much to read, da da da. My edition of this book is 820, 821 pages, I believe. So it's it's definitely mammoth. I'm a little I'm a little intimidated, but I'm really excited to get going on it. So so that's where I'm at so far. This is all I plan on reading in March. I look forward to watching your guys' videos and your TBRs and what events you're participating in March because there's a bajillion. Um, so anyway, March will be a very exciting month on BookTube and I will see you then. Remember to be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Take care, BookTube.